second division of the trigeminal nerve is purely sensory. Course and relations. It arises from the convex anterior border of the trigeminal ganglion. The nerve leaves the middle cranial fossa through the foramen rotundum to reach the pterygopalatine fossa. It traverses straight in the upper part of the fossa and enters the orbit through the inferior orbital fissure, hence it is called the infraorbital nerve. The infraorbital nerve, in fact a continuation of maxillary nerve, runs forwards along the floor of the orbit in the infraorbital groove and appears on the face through the infraorbital foramen. Therefore, in its course, the maxillary nerve traverses four regions in succession. The middle cranial fossa, the pterygopalatine fossa, the orbit, and the face. An important point to be noted here is that in the pterygopalatine fossa, the pterygopalatine ganglion is suspended from the maxillary nerve by two roots. Branches and distribution Maxillary nerve gives off the following branches. In the middle cranial fossa, meningeal branch which supplies the dura mater cranial fossa. In the pterygopalatine fossa, ganglionic or communicating branches two in number to pterygopalatine ganglion. Zygomatic nerve enters the orbit and divides on the lateral wall of the orbit into a zygomatical temporal branch which passes through a foramen in the zygomatic bone to supply the skin of the temple and a zygomatical facial branch which passes through the foramen in the zygomatic bone to supply the skin of the face. Posterior superior alveolar nerve enters one or two foramina on the posterior surface of the body of maxilla and supplies the mucous membrane of the maxillary air sinus. Then it breaks up to form superior dental plexus which supplies the molar teeth and adjoining part of the gum. In the orbit or the infraorbital canal, middle superior alveolar nerve passes downwards and forwards along the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus, joins superior dental plexus and supplies the premolar teeth. Anterior superior alveolar nerve runs in the anterior wall of the maxillary sinus through a bony canal called canalis sinosus and divides into dental and nasal branches. The dental branches join the superior dental plexus and supply the canine and incisor teeth. The nasal branches appear in the lateral wall of the inferior meatus and supply the mucous membrane of the lateral wall and floor of the nasal cavity. An important point to be noted here is that the superior dental plexus is formed by posterior, middle, and anterior superior alveolar nerves. On the face, palpebral branches turn upwards and supply the skin of the lower eyelid. Nasal branches supply the skin of the side of nose and the mobile part of the nasal skin. face innervated by the inferior in the alveolar nerve. Fossa. So, for yeah, example, if this is a nerve and it will somewhere pass into the mandibular foramen in its course, so what we have to do, we have to anesthetize this nerve prior to its entry into the mandibular foramen. So the inferior alveolar nerve is a branch of the mandibular nerve. So it is a branch of the mandibular nerve and the mandibular nerve, it is the third division of the trigeminal nerve. It is third division in the of bone trying to model nerve skin of the face posterior the nerve anesthetized are nerve enters lingual nerve to foramina inferior alveolar nerve surface inferior dental plexus maxilla, mental nerve the and the incisive nerve of the maxillary air the areas anesthetized are it breaks mandibular teeth to the midline here you can see which supplies the molar teeth body of the mandible inferior portion of the ramus 
buccal mucoperiosteum, mucous membrane anterior to the mandibular first molar, anterior two third of the tongue and the floor of the oral cavity. This is by the lingual nerve. So here you can see. So this area it is innervated by the lingual nerve. So lingual nerve is very close to the mandibular nerve. So whenever you give the block of inferior alveolar nerve, usually the lingual nerve is also anesthetized. Of the maxillary sinus, lingual soft tissue and periosteum. Called Here you can see this is also by the lingual nerve. Now, anatomical landmarks: pterygo mandibular fold, anterior border of ramus of mandible, external oblique ridge, retromolar triangle, internal oblique ridge, coronoid notch, pterygo mandibular raphe, pterygo mandibular space, buccal sucking pad. Now the technique. So the area of the greatest depth that is the coronoid notch is identified. So we'll move our thumb and we will identify the greatest depth that is the coronoid notch somewhere here. And then the palpating finger is moved across the retromolar triangle and onto the internal oblique ridge. Here it will go towards the internal oblique ridge. And then the thumb is moved towards the buccal side, taking with it the buccal sucking pad, like this. And then the operator may place the index finger extra orally behind the ramus of the mandible. So in this manner, the anterior posterior width of the ramus can be assessed. So if I'll, I'll be showing here, if this is our thumb, we are placing our thumb here. So our other fingers will just encircle this uh, ramus so that they'll curl to the opposite side so this way we can find out the anterior posterior width of the ramus now ask the patient to keep the mouth wide open so like this and the syringe with 25 gauge needle is inserted parallel to the occlusal plane of the mandible teeth from the opposite side of the mouth at the level not level level bisecting the finger penetrating the tissues of the pterygotemporal depression and entering the pterygomandibular space. The needle is penetrated into the tissues until gently contacting the bone on the internal surface of the ramus of mandible. So our injection will go like this and it will contact the bone and once it contacts the bone, so the needle will be withdrawn about 1 mm. It will be withdrawn about innervated by the inferior alveolar nerve. After negative aspiration, so, we have example, to deposit if this is a 1 to 1.8 ml solution solution into the mandibular foramen and in this has course. to be done. So what we have to so do we is have that to is with an elevation of 1 and a half to 2 minutes we have to the mandibular do not foramen. hurry in that. So the inferior alveolar nerve and is a branch then of the mandibular nerve. Then half of the inserted nerve. depth is so it is a branch of the mandibular and then the remainder nerve. of the solution is injected. The mandibular to nerve it is the third the lingual division nerve. of the so as I already nerve. told that lingual it nerve is, is very close to the mandibular nerve. So you can do nerve. You can anesthetize the lingual nerve. The nerve anesthetized during are. this procedure also. Lingual nerve, inferior alveolar nerve. Now we we'll see a technique. Plexus. So here in this Mental picture, you can see and that the incisive nerve. The, uh, this the shows areas, the areas which are, are anesthetized by the inferior alveolar nerve block the and the buccal nerve. Here you can see block. So this in pink, we can Body see the mandible here that in the mandible portion of the ramus, um, teeth starting from the third molar to the central incisor, the mucous membrane are anesthetized. This first um, uh, half of the tongue, uh, anterior two thirds of the tongue, and the floor this block of the oral cavity, and this uh, is external uh, soft tissues and alveolar mucous membrane. This area is innervated by the lingual nerve. So lingual nerve here is very close to the mandible. This portion, so whenever this you give in the block blue, of inferior this is alveolar not nerve, anesthetized usually by the, the lingual nerve is alveolar also nerve anesthetized. So what we have to do for this, we have to give the buccal nerve lingual block. soft tissue. So and whenever we have to extract any of Here these see, three teeth, also or by we have to perform nerve. any procedure on these now, three anatomical landmarks, molars, we have to give the inferior the alveolar nerve, nerve block and the buccal nerve block. Of so both of these nerve blocks have to be given. External oblique ridge. So for this, we have some techniques. Internal oblique ridge. Coronide notch, two techniques are there. Terigo mandibular raphe. First is the direct technique. Terigo mandibular and the space. second is indirect technique. Buckle sucking pad. Indirect technique, inferior the alveolar technique. nerve is anesthetized so first. The area of the greatest indirect, depth, it is, is anesthetized in the third position. Is identified. So, 
So the indirect will move also up call us for you one two three technique. the greatest step yeah. that direct is the coronal notch we see here the inferior alveolar and is then given first the palpating the finger is the moved vocal. across the retinal triangle in the indirect and the long vocal is given the first the internal oblique ridge and the here, inferior alveolar go. so we see that towards the, the internal oblique ridge the bridge. sequence is uh, reversed and then the thumb is moved towards the buccal now side now the direct taking with it the buccal so first position IAN like is anesthetized from the opposite and side. So, so if we have to give, give place the index uh, the finger extra here, oral oral will behind the ramus from of the, the mandible. opposite. So in this side, manner, okay. the anterior posterior width of the ramus like can be and then the so lingual nerve is anesthetized uh, uh, from the same here. side. If this is our thumb, we are placing our thumb here. And the third so position our is other fingers will just encircle here you this. Can see long vocal uh, nerve is anesthetized ramus. from the same side. So that they'll curl to the opposite now, side. Now, so this way we can find out first the position of posterior long buccal nerve of is the anesthetized ramus. from the same side. Now, then ask the patient to keep the mouth wide open from the same side. So, like this, and the syringe with twenty-five gauge and needle the third is position inserted parallel to the opposite IAN plane is of the mandible teeth from, from the opposite, opposite side. side of the mouth at the level this way, not level level bisecting the finger. Now, the complication. The so tissues. the first complication the is the transient facial paralysis entering the So this is produced space. by deposition of the LA into the body of the parotid gland. Is penetrated. Here you can see in the diagram into the tissues. So this is not the right technique the here. On the our needle went into the dermis gland. So mandible. you can see so it is penetrating here. Our injection so this will, will go like this. this can cause transient facial paralysis because and our once facial it contacts nerve the bone passes through the so gland. The needle will be withdrawn about so one mm. Will be, will be inability to close the lower eyelid the and dropping by of the, the lip on the affected side. Now hematoma is also a complication, so it is a swelling of tissue on the medial side of the ramus after deposition of the anesthetic, and the management is pressure and cold. For example, ice could be given to the area for a minimum of about three to five minutes, and then we have trismus which is muscle soreness or limited